today's presentation, I'll, I'll, definitely we have the title wrong, but uh, it is really our vendor presentations. Uh, I'm the moderator, Brian Hoots, um, as well as the operator, so I have a double duty today. Our presenters today will be uh, with Zoom, George Lillig, Head of Healthcare, uh, WGU, Jeannie Belcher, uh, Northwest Regional Manager of Partnership Team. Uh, from Poly, we have Sean Ammons, the Account Manager. Uh, from Amwell, Kelly Lewis, the Vice President of Virtual Sales. From Jotform, uh, Jotform is going to be addressing their coronavirus responders program. Chad Reed, VP of Marketing and Communication. And we have Simple Visit. We're going to go ahead and start today. Uh, and I realized I haven't been sharing my slides the entire time. Well, that's an operator error on my part. Well, welcome to the program today. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, George. Uh, George, are you there with us? Hey, Brian. Thank you. Ready to go? Yep. We're all set. Please take it away. Great. Thanks, Brian. So hi. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm George Lilly. I'm head of healthcare at Zoom. Um, just a pleasure to be with you. It's an unusual time. Appreciate so much the work the NRTRC is doing and all of you are doing and certainly in concert with all of us. So um, the best to all as we kind of work our way through this, this crisis period. So um, I thought you'd appreciate being from the Northwest. I, I put the Northern Lights up, <laughs> kind of create something that, that bonds us to the Northwest. I'm, I'm actually here in California. So to, to understand uh, Zoom's position is, um, is probably to know a little bit about what we do and what we don't do. And I, and I thought I'd just uh, just paint some history. I have one slide to show you, kind of kind of position where, where we fit, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to our next presenter. Um, if you think about the you know the the whole discussion of, of telemedicine, you know certainly people like Brian and, and Deb and, and work that we've done in the past even together, then I think the use cases have become well established, right? So. There, and there's so many good use cases and there's so much good that has been done. I think for us at Zoom, you know, the discussion becomes a lot more about, you know, why, why should we do this? It, it becomes more about how can we do this well? So I think the shift from why to, to how is sort of what we're all in the middle of right now, especially with the giant scale that's, that's been required, um, uh, especially recently. So um, on the subject of how, you know, from a, we're a technology company, we're not really a telemedicine company, but, but we are a, a very critical, we think that the best visual element for a telemedicine engagement. And so that's, that in a nutshell, that's kind of that's where, where Zoom fits. And so if you think back to, you know, even in the Northwest where so much of this started back in the day when you'd, you'd try to service somebody on the bush in Alaska, you'd send a signal up to a satellite, it'd come down to a device there, it wasn't great, you know, quality, but it was functional and it served a purpose. And then things progressed, right? And we get uh, there's kind of a kind of a, a, um, a universe of things that was really good. Kind of a perfect storm happened where camera technology got better and the chipsets got better, so codecs could be more robust and the bandwidth that was available in rural places got so much better. So, you know, the use cases started to prolifer proliferate and people were figuring out the why of so many ways they could, they could serve people this way. And, and it got to a point where I think a lot of good was done. And, and, and a lot of that looked like a hospital and a clinic connecting, for example, which, which to our industry looks a lot like video conferencing. This happens to be healthcare. Maybe you have a cart, maybe you have some, connect, you know, some devices connected. And, and that, that, that has done a lot of good, got a lot of attention from the government, a lot of grant money, for example. But there's a, there was always a cap on, on how far could you really extend that? And so if you start to think about, as opposed to you know, a, a, a doctor patient situation that might be in a hospital or a clinic, now we're, now we're dealing with the subject of population wellness. And so large scale is, is of, of the mind, right? So if you, if you think about what would people want to try to address that, you'd want something that's easy to scale, right? You'd, it, you'd probably want something that was relatively inexpensive because of the amount of people we're going to try to cover, it might almost look like a commodity, which is, is not an insult. You know, it's, it, that's probably a good thing. You know, could, could I take something that looks and feels more like a commodity to a wide number of people? Um, do I get a nice experience so that someone that's on it is, is interested in doing it again? <laughs> you know, it works, it's crisp, it's clear. And um, is it secure? 
And then kind of a big thing that for our industry has been a, been a problem is how do you touch the consumer in a home or, or on a device? And, and back in my days of selling hardware that, you know, that we could, you could do it, but there was a limit. It was, it was expensive or it's hard to scale, all the things that kind of got after. So, so here we are now and we're dealing with population wellness and what does population wellness want? It looked, it, it just, all the things that Zoom has created in the cloud with the way we deliver the service matches really well. You know, we have a secure cloud, we can scale small, we can scale extremely large. We can do that pretty easily because it's all coming from, from, uh, from the cloud as opposed to trying to, to manipulate hardware around your network. Does, can somebody who doesn't have a lot of proficiency at using video get on and use it, understand it and enjoy it? And, and, that's, and that's Zoom. So, so it's kind of a really interesting, nice mix for us. So we, we took that position and said, let's make sure at least for our part, we have the right things in here. And I'll, I'll just share one really, really quick uh, slide with you. So you know, if you think of, of Zoom as a, a piece of the puzzle in the telehealth workflow, that, that's us. And, and so the things that we can control, like clear crisp video, is it easy to use? Are you compliant underneath HIPAA? Hey, I need to connect some devices, digital stethoscopes, maybe otoscopes things like that. Can you do that? Bar and camera control. We actually have a, a longer list here of things that we're always kind of working on bringing to the experience. Um, these are, these are in, our, in our world. And then so what we did is we opened some doors to Zoom via the API and the SDK for both desktop and mobile so that we could become a part of the workflow. But, but we're not the workflow company. You know, so people will take, take advantage of us of the Zoom uh, um, video tool, and they will engage us into their workflow. And for example, you know the EMR interface could could be a big deal, um, and we we did a very nice integration uh, within Epic. So within Epic, you can launch Zoom, make it a lot easier for the caregiver and the patient both. We we definitely made a conscious decision at one point to to not take on all of these other things. We we have bigger agendas, but we do feel like. Like this video element is is become uh, some so critical to do well that if we do that right, we're going to have great results. And that's and that and that is really what's happened. So when when we go to market now, you'll see us in everywhere from extremely large you know institutions who are who are taking us for their programs to what we've seen recently, which actually surprised me a little bit. But we think it through in a crisis. It, it's not surprising at all the small world of clinicians have, have had to find a way to, to, to touch patients and treat patients without letting them come into the office. So how do you do that? And, and again, you got to scale real well, but I think that the, if, there's a, if there's a pony in this or a kernel of, uh, of goodness in, in this that's been encouraging to people, the fact that, that in our architecture, we don't look at somebody at home any different really than we look at somebody in a business is, is a great way to consider that we could get to the subject of population wellness. And, and, that's, and that's how we do it. There's some secret sauce, of course, in the cloud, all that blends together, but um, that's who we are. And um, we're proud of it. Happy to take uh, any calls or any questions uh, when we're done, but that's who Zoom is. And I, I'm gonna pass it off to uh, our colleague, Sean Amos from Poly. Thank you. Sean, are you with us? Yeah, I am, Brian. I didn't know if you wanted me to uh, go next or Jeannie, so happy to. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay. So Neil's, Neil's pulling up the slides. Thank you very much. Um, I can kind of play a little bit on George's story a little bit here because I am in Carnation, Washington, but where I live is on five acres up this logging road. And I am as if I could be in Alaska um, on a satellite connection. So I always have to make sure that I um, take extra precaution on how, uh, you know, this conversation goes. So Neil is kind enough to share his slides from his internet connection, which is really good. So just so you all know, it's not a reflection of the technology per se, because Holly is really good at this technology, but we really are at the mercy of, um, bandwidth this time so so bear with me a little bit um so um as george said my name is sean ammon 
And I am with Polly. I support Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Alaska, and Montana in healthcare. Um, I also have education and government, but primarily most um, I do um, a lot with healthcare. And as you know, this has been a really interesting time. So I'm incredibly proud to support all the effort. Um, I'm really glad that NRTRC and TAO continued on with this conference and that we're able to manage it virtually. I think that's exceptional. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Um, so you may or may not be familiar with Polly. As Polly, you might have um, familiarity with the root of ourselves is Plantronics and Polycom. So a little over a year ago, we have merged and become one organization. Um, so if that doesn't resonate now, maybe you understand a little bit more. Poly is actually a Greek word. It means many. Um, and so it resonates with Polly's persona very well. Um, Polly means many, as I said, so we provide many endpoints across the globe. We are supporting many um, incredible alliance partners, such as Zoom, as we just talked about, um, as well as others. Um, we connect people. We're all about connectivity, human-human interaction and collaboration. And when it's tying it back to many, it's like one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many, et cetera. It's not just me who supports this region. I have an incredible team. I work with two engineers. Um, you may recognize these names, Danielle Pena out of California and Joey Morley out of Vancouver, Canada. Um, I report to Cindy Diani, who is incredible and has been with Polly a long time and supported the region in healthcare. Later today, you'll hear from Dana Satterwhite. I'll do a shameless plug for her. She is a grants resource extraordinaire. And in healthcare, as you know, any, any way we can find funding to support the initiatives for healthcare is a good thing, and she is truly an expert. Um, Neil Hooper, who is also on the panel here today, um, helped develop this content and keep me in line. So I appreciate his efforts. And I work with Kelly Shannon a lot, who is um, critical in understanding the unique requirements and needs from a headset perspective. Um, so that's a little bit about the team that supports, um, a little bit about Polly and kind of how, how we came to be with Plantronics and with Polycom together. Um, so right now, as you know, everything has changed. Um, we are in the world of COVID-19 and telehealth is definitely um, at the forefront of everybody's mind. I mean, we're all working from home for the most part, schools at home, but it's critically important that we support our healthcare workers and we support the efforts moving forward in regards to, you know, the diagnosis of this care. Um, medical safety is obviously the utmost importance and, um, and so that's kind of where we're gonna go. I'm really only gonna talk about a couple of things today in regards to our vastness of how we can support healthcare, um, and I'll get to that. Neil, would you be so kind to shift to the sec next slide? Thank you very much. So from Polly's perspective, we really have a unique value proposition to support healthcare, and so, what I'm talking about is our focus in regards to that um, uh, that care in regards to video, um, our video solutions, whether we're talking about the eagle eye camera that I'm on today to the video that's in the environment from a one to one perspective or conference rooms supporting the smallest of conference rooms from a huddle perspective um, to a patient care center, to large conference rooms or large facilities within the organization in the hospital or clinics. Um, we've got phones um, in, that can support different environments. A critical piece here is everyone's using headsets if they can from a work at home and it's critically important that that audio is incredibly clear. So that's kind of our focus. That's what we're known for is that high quality audio with little, you know, minimize the distractions if you can at all in the background, making those connections as simple as possible. So like I was saying, the unique value proposition here of partnering with Polly really is that quality experience end to end when it supports healthcare. We like to leverage our strengths and make it as human-like as possible. Um, so that experience, as much as we like to be in front of the doctor with the nurse or in those clinics, 
right now it's probably not possible in most scenarios. Um, and if we can have that experience as personal as possible in a one-to-one -one scenario um, via video conference, that's kind of the, our aspiration is to keep that as simple as possible. Um, let's see. So yeah, Anil, I think we're okay to go to the next slide. So like I said, we're really only focused on a couple things here. There is probably enough content in regards to poly supportive healthcare to warrant its own half hour or so. But I really just picked in, and I think um, our friend George here um, talked about it as well, just the wellness, the population wellness, I think is the way that um, he worded it. That home care, that collaboration um, from the patient at home to the healthcare professionals, I think this is the life that we're living and it probably will be extended well after COVID-19. And again, our focus is that human to human interaction. Um, so I think the importance from a poly solution and the role that we are playing is, um, has always been valued, but I think we're really testing it right now to the limits. And I think that it's, it's over time, it will prove to be a very solid component of the solution, whether we're talking about diagnostics, whether we're talking about just the process through the holistic care of a patient, et cetera. Neil? There you go. Um, so historically, I think um, from an industry perspective, specialty care was really what was the primary focus. A lot of the, I would say, telehealth focus has been. But as you're seeing, not only are we talking about generation population healthcare, but we're really, you know, in response to COVID, et cetera, that urgent care um, uh, component is now definitely. Um, uh, definitely uh, part of the equation, and I think that will be, we will all be forever changed, whether we're talking about urgent care, um, using telehealth and mental health in particular right now, um, as well as historically have been working with crisis. So we all believe here at Poly that things will never really be the same. I think this is, I don't want to call it an experiment, that's not the right word. I think that what we are all learning as industry and partner that supports healthcare is that we're going to learn a lot what works and what we need to improve upon. But I think the biggest piece from a poly perspective um, is really focusing on our core competency and where we can add value. And where we add value is playing our strength in our video, in our collaboration and communication technology, whether it's, you know, at the camera, in the conference room, headset, et cetera, is really trying to keep as real as possible that communication in between nurse, doctor, care, you know, care folks and patients and people who are helping and assisting on both sides of the equation. I think that remote medical care is here to stay, obviously, and probably will be continued to build out. Um, so, uh, I think that's a good a good place to focus um, and shift to the very last shameless plug. If we have the opportunity today to attend, I, I already spoke to the skill set of Dana Satterwhite. I've had the honor of joining as many calls as I can possibly get on. This individual knows grants like no one's business. Um, whether we're talking about you know in government Rust DLT grants or in telehealth. Um, right now, the telehealth grant that is available right now, she has um, the guidance and best practices, tips, tricks. She is great. She can't write the grant, obviously, but she is an incredible resource. And if you have the opportunity to attend the poly session in regards to grants at 355 today, I would highly recommend it. Um, if you want to reach us as your dedicated team after this, we can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with her. Um, I've reached out to many organizations in regards to her as a resource, um, but uh, again, I'm happy to facilitate and coordinate all of those efforts. So that's just a really, really quick, very quick introduction to our team, Poly Supporting Healthcare, um, resources available, and again, the grant. So afterwards, if there's any questions, please feel free to reach out and I'll align you with, if it's not myself, the right resource, because I know there's, I think there's some folks from other states here, but um, if you're in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Alaska, or Montana, and you are in healthcare, 
I am happy to help you. So it's very nice to meet you all. Thank you, Sean. And we've got uh, uh, yep. Jeannie Belcher from uh, WGU with us now. Jeannie, are you there? I am. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining all of us today. I know you've been in sessions for uh, probably a day and a half, and you've got more to go. And staring at your computer screen, I'm sure, uh, is taking its toll on you. But we're delighted that you could spend this time with all of us. Um, I will, I'm going to uh, do a quick overview of Western Governors University. Normally, I would say how many of you are familiar with WGU and get a great show of hands. Can't do that virtually, but I'm hoping that um, that we've got some students and grads out there and others who, who are familiar with the university. Um, <clears throat> the work that you're doing in, in telehealth is truly based on innovative concepts, and you can tell by the other presenters the unique and new tools that are available, the, the resources that help you do your jobs better um, <clears throat> um, to serve both rural and urban populations and provide as affordable accessible timely health care and it's this unfortunately is a horrible time to learn how great it is at the same time it's it's a great time for people to realize that we have so many different kinds of choices and support for our own well-being um western governors university um uh does kind of the same has the same approach and you'll get to hear a little bit about that to give you a little bit of a break from all of us talking i'm going to start with a quick video and they'll come back um, and we'll go through a few more details. So let me see if I can share my screen. There we are. All righty. And I'm We've hoping somebody raises their hand if they're not seeing my screen. We've got it. Thank you. We're a different breed, aren't we? While others rest, we choose to work. While others dream, we do. Where others are content, we stay hungry. They may not see us coming, but we know exactly where we're going. And when we see what we want, we go get it. You won't rest until you succeed, neither will we. That always gives me goosebumps when I think about our students and our graduates and those who've influenced the making of videos like that. Um, the mission of Western Governors University um, um, is truly around the same kinds of um, missions that you all have in your organizations. That we're we're student obsessed, we're your patient obsessed. Um, we're our goal is to really provide really successful outcomes for our students, those who are going to go out and not only make a difference in their own lives, but make a, a difference in the lives of others. So WGU was designed to be different, and we've been the right solution for thousands of graduates since our founding in 1997. WGU is proud to have been one of the first pioneers of competency-based online education designed for busy working adults. When you stop to think about where we were in 1997 in terms of internet and online anything, it was pretty new. So for our founders to come up with an online university that's competency-based, and that's one of the differences of WGU in our model, um, it was very, very pioneering and it continues to be today. Um, for some of these reasons that are on the screen, WGU may be a right solution for you as it's been for thousands of graduates um, in the past, as I'd said. Um, we're designed to be a flexible, affordable, convenient path with tremendous support for our students. When we talk about flexibility, um, we talk about it in, in terms of our coursework. We talk about it in terms of how individuals learn and the resources that they need. 
um, as long as an individual has an internet connection and access to a computer, they can do their courses anywhere, anytime. Western Governors University is a nonprofit, mission-driven, student-obsessed university. Um, our faculty and staff make it their top priorities to help their students achieve dreams of a degree and a better career and helping change their family, their family and others. What is competency-based education? We, we are starting to hear it a little bit more and more. Um, competency-based education measures learning rather than seat time. Um, this model allows our students to advance through course material as soon as they can demonstrate proficiency or competency in each subject. The focus is on how a student learns, not where or how long it takes them to learn. Once they've acquired a defined set of knowledge and skills, they are, and they can demonstrate that, they're able to to progress through their programs. Um, for example, if somebody comes to us and with, um, on, the, on the technology or IT side of one of your organizations that doesn't have a degree, they're very self-taught, or maybe they did some community college courses or even earned a community college degree, they're probably pretty proficient in that work. Do they really need to spend eight or 12 weeks in a, in a degree program or in a, in a course that they, may be able to teach themselves or, or have a great amount of knowledge already. It, in a competency-based model, they come to us, they go through a series of courses, they have to demonstrate proficiency, um, and then they can move on really quickly. We have students that go through a course in a matter of days <clears throat> or just a few short weeks, or they're able to spend more time in a certain course, whether that's new material for them or it's material that they wanna dive deeper in and become more of an expert in. Our students work one-on-one -on -one with a mentor, and very much like the work that you and the front lines are doing, um, somebody every week they check in with, that they're on a virtual chat, we're all getting better at that, um, more comfortable with it, um, whether it's with your healthcare or with your, your school, your kids' schools, um, um, it's just becoming the way we're doing things. We've been doing it since 1997, where our mentors are face-to-face -face with their students, um, they are like a coach. Um, they help them through the sticky parts of the course materials or the sticky parts of their life. We know everybody from time to time has challenges that they need to work through. They also work with course instructors too, some a higher level subject matter expert in each of those courses. So there's very, very supported throughout the entire process. Bear with me, down. WG is very affordable as well. Our tuition is a flat rate. Um, our students pay their tuition every six months and that covers the, all of the courses they're able to con complete. We want them to complete three or four in that six month time period and oftentimes students will complete six to eight. What that does is make your program more affordable and shorten your time to completion. The tuition covers all your eBooks um, we have scholarships and financial aid that make it even more affordable. Last year, we awarded more than $15, $15 million in scholarships. Last year, also, Washington State was one of the largest recipients of scholarship dollars. Um, and so we are hoping to expand that through the rest of the Pacific Northwest region. Um, I think over a million dollars was awarded in Washington State to our students. WGU has four different colleges, College of Health Professions, of course, Business, Information Technology, and then Teachers College. Within each college, we have um, a range of programs, and I've listed just a few that are really aligned to some of the needs in the health and the telehealth industry, um, from health professions to IT to business. Our students often report their decisions to attend WGU and their, uh, were, their decisions and their experience were worthwhile and valuable, as you can see by the high percentages of those who responded to surveys. Our students and graduates do indeed refer their friends and colleagues, just ask around and you may have somebody in sitting um, in, in your workplace or somebody that you know that's been one of our students or graduates. Um, and speaking of innovation, according to Fast Company, um, WGU was chosen for showing public schools another way to do business, so the business of education. WGU is uniquely equipped 
to provide education employees need and the smart, highly skilled workers employers are working are looking for. And that's also demonstrated by some of the employer satisfaction that we receive. Um, you can see that um, WGU prepares you for the jobs that employers need. And we work with employers in a variety of ways. One, to make sure our programs are aligned with their needs and then we meet workforce development needs and that they can provide input to what um, expectations we have coming in the future. Uh, we partner with companies that, that value a skilled workforce. Um, they hire our graduates. They send their students to uh, their employees to us as students. You may see some of the companies that you work for here, and this is just a really small sampling. If, if you don't see your company here and you'd like to learn more about that, we'll certainly reach out to us. Um, and finally, thank you for your time. I know you've got other things you could be doing right now, whether it's getting lunch, or checking out on your kids, lots of different things. Um, so we really appreciate the opportunity. This is the first time we've been involved with the telehealth conference, although we work with a lot of the organizations that are members. And we are delighted to be able to continue the involvement through this virtual um, uh, format. I've listed some of our, our, um, our team members that may uh, be in the areas that you are um, and I understand, um, Brian, will this be available later for folks? Yes. Okay, terrific. Um, and with that, I'll say thank you and turn it over to the next. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jeannie. Uh, next, we have Kelly Lewis from Amwell. Kelly, are you there? Uh, go ahead and keep talking, Kelly. Not hearing you yet. See your slides, Kelly, but I haven't heard you yet. Okay, let's try one more time, Kelly. Can you uh, maybe just check and see if your microphone's still muted? I don't show it muted. I see it there, it's, um, there we go. Let's try that again. Um, Kelly, I'm going to ask Chad to continue or have you stop sharing and we're going to go to Chad and I'll work with you offline to see what happened. You're, you're on there and we're not getting your audio. Chad, are you online? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Would you mind starting and we'll work with Kelly? Absolutely. Um, hi everyone. My name is Chad, uh, Chad Reed from JotForm. Greetings from California. Super excited to, to be here with everyone, with everyone here today. Um, JotForm is a HIPAA compliant online form solution that's trusted by 6 million users around the world. And get this popped up, there we go. Uh, and what we're trying to do is make sure that you don't have to print or that your patients don't have to print another paper form ever again. So some of the popular uses for job form include patient intake, appointment scheduling, uh, getting consent from patients using our signature fields, and online bill payments. We have over 30 different payment integrations, including all of the major ones, um, as well as patient satisfaction surveys. I'm gonna take just 30 seconds here to show you how easy it is to create a form using JotForm. We're gonna get started with a template in the interest of time, starting with our HIPAA landing page, scrolling down here. Uh, we'll try our new patient enrollment form. If you select that, then this automatically redirects to our form builder. And this is where you can configure and customize the form to look exactly the way you'd like. If you wanna add any elements to your form, you do it on the left panel here. Everything is one click, address, phone, um, any custom fields you'd like as well. And you can also customize the, the design as well. So in this case, we'll go ahead and quickly add an image or a logo. A little big, but there we go. And that form is ready to go. Uh, you can embed it directly into your site or send it as a standalone link. And all that patient information will get, will get sent to you directly. 
I'm going to take just a second to talk about a new program that we're doing. This is called the Coronavirus Responder Program. Uh, we're offering free, unlimited HIPAA compliant accounts to uh, anyone that's on the front lines battling COVID-19, and that includes uh, most especially healthcare providers, um, government agencies, and nonprofits as well. But we've recently opened up the program to include anyone working in healthcare during the, this time of crisis. Um, and we've already accepted uh, about 3,000 different uh, applications as well for, for the program. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can go ahead and also use the QR code here on the left and uh, let me know if you have any questions or feedback. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Kelly, let's unmute the microphone and let's see if we're hearing you. I know you were able to unplug it and restart it. Do we have you now? We do not still have you yet, Kelly. Um, uh, let's, uh, um, let me uh, take just a moment here and uh, what I'd like to have you do is maybe just switch to your, you have the option to switch to telephone audio down at the bottom left hand of your screen. It'll say switch to phone audio and it will give you the phone number and the participant ID to join. Okay, I'll give you just a moment to do that. Um, I want to assure everyone that uh, Kelly was on connected earlier and it all worked. Everybody did everything they needed to to make sure that it worked well for us. So something happened here in between. Uh, uh, George, I understand. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions real quick while Kelly's getting that situated. And uh, um, uh, George, uh, you had a question that came up. Do you want to share that question? I think you've already uh, sent it out. Um, but yeah, thanks, Brian. So about it. I was asked about, uh, this is a common concern, in fact, so if you want to give a, a new patient an opportunity to test the, test the connection, if you will, prior to the encounter with the doctor, um, Zoom does have, like, inherent in it um, a, a way to test your microphone and test your speaker, but as the questioner pointed out to me, those are resonant only on the computer of the person that's, that's going to make the connection. And it doesn't really give you the, the, the patient right within Zoom an opportunity to, to test the full connection with, with bandwidth. Um, so I, I, what I have said is I'll, I'll pass that back on to our developers. I think that's a great idea. It's certainly something that's commonly needed. What most of our big providers do is um, they'll put a care coordinator in place. And for a lot of first time participants, the care coordinator will make contact go through the process, make sure that the patient has the opportunity to get connected and can, and can connect uh, uh, well. So that's, it's, def, it's solved uh, sort of out, outside of us on the workflow, but I appreciate the input because that would be nice if we could just embed that right in our, in our, in our application. Um, I think it's uh, really interesting, George, uh, that, uh, you know, the challenge with a lot of these is to, uh, make sure that uh, we're trying to minimize the amount of impact the technology has on the provider's time to care for the yeah. patient. So just Definitely. a moment. Let's try this again. Go ahead, Kelly. Go ahead and keep talking, Kelly. Okay. I'm going to try and turn your volume up as loud as I can. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. My screen's not, my PowerPoint's not working now. Well, okay. Hey, everyone. Sorry again. Kelly Lewis, I am the Vice President of Amwell. Um, I only have two minutes, so I'm going to keep this very quick. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar with Amwell, we are a full cell spectrum telehealth solution, purpose built for telehealth. So a little bit different than um, other communication companies in that everything we do is around your workflow. We have both software platforms as well as apps to work with patients and providers. We have a full suite of purpose built devices, uh, telemedicine cards, kiosks, peripherals. We also have a great uh, clinical network that you can leverage, meaning uh, we've got providers and suits that cover all 50 states for on-demand care, as well as we have uh, providers, telepsychiatrists available for ED, inpatient, as well as at home care. 
One thing that really separates AMWOW in the market is um, what we do around success services. We realize that telehealth, while it's going to be widely adopted after um, what we're going through right now, it's still new to a lot of people. So we have engagement services. We'll work very closely with your providers um, and your marketing team to make sure that patients understand what telehealth is, how they can utilize it, um, and kind of some of the advantages of it. The other thing we look at is we realize that everything needs to be branded to you. So utilizing our SDK, um, we can really white label this experience for you, as well as um, ensuring that we're integrating with your EHRs. Um, top of mind for everyone right now, obviously, um, because we're in a global health crisis, a lot of the regulatory limitations have been taken away for the time being. But knowing that that is it's really not long term. Um, we're really working with health systems right now to say, what is a quick fix? How can we get up and running on telehealth today? But then what is our long term strategy and how do we make sure that security is optimized? So we are high trust certified, we're ISO certified, um, and we really consider that um, security needs to be top of mind and, and we will have those conversations with you on how we can ensure that for you, both your patients and your providers. Um, like I said, I have two minutes, so I want to keep this really short, but um, if you have any questions, want to talk more, I'd love to talk to you. My team can be available at business.selman at amwell.com. Please feel to reach out to me directly, too. I'd love to chat um, kind of on what your initiatives are and how you're handling telehealth as we move forward in these, these very challenging times. Could everyone hear me? Perfect. Okay, yeah, we got, great. we got a lot of thumbs up, so I hope that the participants were able to hear our little workaround, um, you know, and technology uh, gives us a little hiccup, we pivot, right? Um, yes, thank you see. for bearing with me. No problem. Um, we'll kind of transition now a little bit to more of a QA. and um, I'm going to change this so everybody can see everybody, um, and so that you're all now visible to the entire uh, group. There's a, about 70 people that are connected today um, listening and watching this program, and I know there'll be others who have uh, uh, going to be watching the recording. Um, one of the things I'd like to ask, uh, real quick, I had to readjust the camera here, bear with me. Um, one of the questions that uh, is asked a lot about tele technology, and I think it's good um, as vendors, as equipment manufacturers, as the technology providers for us, um, is that we have a paradigm shift. And I think overnight we had it shifted from, well, I might use telemedicine to I have to use telemedicine. So I'm just curious, um, and maybe take a, a few minutes and maybe we'll start with George. Um, you know, what impact is the shift having um, maybe on you and uh, the kinds of things that you're seeing uh, at Zoom? Uh, and really, the question is going to be for everybody here. Um, go ahead, George. It certainly has been a giant impact. I mean, not not just in telemedicine, but you know, Zoom went from roughly 10 million daily participants to 200 million daily participants over the course of a couple months. We we gave the, the platform a service away for free to K through 12, and so you know, you combine that with the the massive demand of, for people working at home to to telemedicine and doctors needing the service, like you said, that's a must have. I think um, the good thing is that, you, I mean, this wouldn't have been possible not that long ago to, to get them service because back in the days of this all being hardware, you couldn't, you just, you couldn't scale it that large, you couldn't scale it that quick. So I think the market's definitely been the, the benefit beneficiary of of a more scalable, easy to get at way of connecting by, by miles. Um, that said, you know, like there's a lot of, well, what do I do now <laughs> that I think when we go forward, how can we help those people through, I'm doing this business this way now with this patient, you know, what, what are some best practices for the people that haven't really thought this through before? Many have, but many haven't. How do I connect or how do I like guide them to me this way? That, that kind of thing would be, I think, Part of a big part of what's next. Sean, you want to take a stab at it there, Polly? Yeah, I mean, I think for Polly, from a perspective, I mean, there was an instant and immediate prioritization around healthcare um, in regards to the immediate and, you know, unprecedented, amazing uh, demand that was required and asked of, of a lot of the manufacturers, Polly, Polly included. 
in regards to stepping up production as much as we could given the environment and the resources that we we had available to us while respecting and honoring the safety and well-being of all of the employees the manufacturing anybody any of the parts components all of it um, we built an internal escalation path for healthcare in particular um, for their requirements as well as operational response in COVID. Um, we built a third shift in manufacturing where it was 24-7 um, as much as possible. Um, rather than two eight-hour shifts, we were doing three-hour shifts um, just to meet production. I think the world in regards that probably will never be the same in regards to making sure that we can expand and have that, um, I guess, that flexibility to turn um, as quickly as we, we could. I mean, as you can imagine, I'm sure we're not the only manufacturer that makes headsets and, and video equipment that experiences, but I have to tell you, I'm very honored to work for this organization to see what they could do in a very short amount of time to try to minimize or at least address some of that incoming um, uh, exceptional need that was required of us. So I, was, I think that that world will be forever recognized. And again, from a priority standpoint, it's all about healthcare um, as well as uh, operational response in regards to this pandemic. You made it, Brian. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Kelly. Um, yeah, I think from our standpoint, we have just been so proud of our health system partners and our health plans and how they have addressed this. They've moved so quickly. Um, we've been standing up specific COVID practices that they can operate with to address this. We have a lot of customers here in Washington who felt this right away. And then, of course, in our mountain, who I know is part of this group, um, how quickly they just were able to come around, find solutions to adapt has just been super impressive. Um, and I think this is here to stay. I think some of the regulatory requirements are definitely going to come back, but I think from a reimbursement standpoint, which has been the one thing that has really helped this from moving forward, um, I don't think you can take that back. And I think we're going to see quick changes from a reimbursement standpoint that are going to enable um, patients to see providers in the way that they they want to. Um, I saw a question on here, someone asked, do you see this as a lasting change in primary care? Absolutely. Um, I think once you see your provider from home and you realize how quickly you can, um, for a germ appointment or something that's very easy and you don't have to leave your facility or your house, and you don't have to go into a healthcare facility, um, it's game changing. And I, I think it's here to stay for sure. Great. And uh, Chad, you want to take a shot at this? Uh, coming back to Jeannie here. Go ahead, Chad. Sure. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think we we ever position our products for telemedicine specifically, but we've seen a just surge in, in usage um, during you know at the onset of the of the epidemic, and uh, we realized the the need to allow people to to collect this information. Uh, remotely and uh, through through telehealth, and when they don't have, when no one has access to a printer and uh, and everything else, so I think we've we've had to kind of adopt. I mean, we, we were always um, popular among among healthcare, but we've actually seen a real a real surge, uh, actually much to our surprise. But yeah, I mean, I think that the changes are are going to be long lasting, and um, kind of to what Kelly was talking about too. I think it's it has a lot to do with patient comfort and the reality that if if a patient a patient preference that if, if they can stay home and, and be more comfortable, I think uh, healthcare has to, has, has to adopt to that and, and make those kind of changes. And luckily, uh, all of our technologies are facilitating that. Jeannie, I'm going to ask you the question that comes parallel to that is we have all these technologies, we have the paradigm shift, we have a now to a different need. Is our workforce ready for this? Are our schools teaching about telemedicine? Um, you know, are they actively using these tools? will they become part of the protocols in the future? Mm -hmm. We do, our degree programs in the nursing field do have telehealth as a part of, of that coursework. Um, um, and they, I think they are ready for that. I, you know, People come to an online and a competency-based organization because they want something different that's not the standard. They, for a reason that maybe um, is becoming more and more common and unfortunately more necessary, um, 
um, they, they, for a lot of reasons, you just can't do brick and mortar or stand, um, standardized um, education anymore. It's got to be flexible. It's got to be responsive um, and timely and relevant. Um, we are seeing some of the same kinds of uh, two um, impacts in, in our world is one that where we have um, health professionals who are faculty as well, who are back, called back to the front line to really, you know, support what's what's happening and what the need is and they get to take with them that education that they have as a faculty member and and use that on the ground right away so it's we're seeing some immediate um, um, successes there if you will and then as a result we're getting calls from our healthcare partners saying can you teach us how to do some of these things for more more remotely more virtually um, that maybe they've done some things that across um, facilities or even state lines, but it's it's not as um, fluid as as it could be. And there's definitely that that need for it, for not taking people off the floor or out of their workplace. I was thinking as you were talking a little bit about I, does this change how flu season will occur in the United States moving forward in the world, right? I, I'm not sure that telemedicine was used effectively in the flu season prior to this, but will it change it in the future? Any thoughts from anybody else? You have to figure if you can keep people away, you know, who might infect somebody and then this, all of this technology supports that. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, several large clients, you know, people, for example, who scaled from 800 doctors to 8,000 on the service in, in a day and come back and say, some of the forced usage here has really caused some of our, our people who maybe weren't so prone to want to do business this way with a patient to now say we really need to get keep this in place so i def definitely have heard that several times even had one one institution tell me that they're getting ready to design a new hospital and how should they design it now based on everything from could certain people that are there work from home could you know, should we be building something that supports virtual encounters? You know, I think that's a really interesting thought process for the future. Any other comments related to that? Um, Kelly and Chad, I see that there are some specific questions maybe directed towards you in the Q&A. Feel free to take a look at those and, and if you want to respond to them online, that'd be great. Um, at the uh, I was looking at, it says, do any of your companies provide all at the provide at the elbow experience to train providers and staff for utilization of your services. So I think it is, speaks to um, the institution getting help from our technology partners in getting training and getting mm -hmm. up to speed. Anybody want to take a shot at that? Um, well, I'll start. This is Sean again with Polly. I do know that our services organization does have a lot of, um, service offerings that have sort of a knowledge transfer component per se. Um, but I don't know, and as well as like Poly University for online, and I do know that our partner community, as well as our individual SEs, our service org and stuff are, are trained themselves. Um, so to pass that knowledge and that expertise on to, you know, the healthcare institutions, um, but I don't know about training per se. I just know so services offerings and training in the partner community that supports healthcare, as well as online. If somebody individually wanted to go on polyuniversity.com and, and YouTube videos and things like that. We, we do have customer success managers for our medium and larger customers who engage and are assigned to the account for life. Um, and then for the, the more mass market community, we, we try to, post as many useful um, videos as we can along with information. And then we'll, we actually do webinars like this where people can come participate on best practices. Kelly, what about AMLU? Not hearing you, maybe your uh, telephone's muted. I tried to mute my computer, I'm so used to it. Um, so yes, absolutely, we have all of that. Um, we have individual training that can be provided. We have super user training. Um, we have a full training department dedicated just to providers. Because we have our own medical group, um, we're experts in this because we're onboarding providers every day onto our own platform. Um, so it, 
it's really customizable based on your needs. We also have a ton of self-service tools that can be used to make sure people are comfortable up and running quick start guides, et cetera. Excellent. How about Chad? Yeah, for sure. You know, on the individual level, it, it's something that we would typically offer to enterprise plans, but um, as some of the other presenters have, have mentioned, we have a lot of uh, videos. We just did a webinar yesterday. Uh, so a lot of our uh, marketing materials are really oriented toward education and, and training as well. I'm gonna throw another question to Jeannie and it has to do with workflow. And, and I think, uh, George, when you started out, you gave a, mentioned about where you feel Zoom fits kind of in that technology and the workflow is really a piece that the uh, groups need to really focus on how they use your tools in terms of it. But I'm curious from uh, Jeannie's perspective, you mentioned that WGU has both the healthcare and an IT in information technology. So what are you doing to prepare our information technology people to understand the workflows? And what are you doing to prepare our healthcare tech people to understand the technology that they're using? Um, I'm, I'm just I have a question for WGU. We work with our partners and our community college partners um, to determine what some of those needs would be and then make sure that our degree programs are aligned to those needs, whether it's um, uh, health information management, uh, two-year degree at a community college that transfers into our degree that serves a specific need within the healthcare organizations. Um, this, this, honestly, it's the same with any of the IT degrees. The cybersecurity um, is a huge, and data analytics is huge right now too for healthcare. So as far as that, what the workflow is, it's really just making sure our programs serve the needs of those organizations. We've done some custom uh, work and will continue. So that kind of goes to the question you just asked the others is about the, the transfer, the knowledge transfer or ownership within an organization. We're doing some things with Intermountain Healthcare that are unique to their needs. So whether it's a certificate or custom education to specifically meet that, um, their needs. That hopefully we'll get to scale otherwise, but it's, you know, starting there. So more of an applied, you know, basic IT and then apply it towards a specific environment like Intermountain Healthcare right. or something to that effect. Right, well, then, but we work with them. I mean, it's driven by those partners. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Uh, any other comments about that? Anybody have any experience with, uh, you know, working to help develop people that understand the workflows and help people use the technology? Well, maybe a loaded question, right? Um, but hey, I want to take the time right now. We're only a few minutes from the end. I, I want to tell everybody how much we appreciate it. This conference could not have been happen, happen without the technology that Zoom has provided us today. We are using their webinar tools. Um, it has worked great in terms of it. We always, with any technology, there's a percentage of hiccups and things like that that happened as Kelly encountered. Uh, we won't hold Amwell against that for any way, Kelly. I think you've been a sport um, in terms of that. Uh, we really appreciate all your sponsorship of the program as well. Um, I, I really would encourage you to everybody listening and those that watch the recording to reach out to these companies um, to see what they have to offer and how they fit to meet your needs and, and how you're trying to do what you're trying to do and challenge these vendors. You know, don't just accept the products as they are. I see a question in here about, hey, your technology could be a little better. I think our vendors want that information. All of you uh, count on the millions of eyes that touch your technology uh, for that little bit of feedback and, and just, uh, they might not have thought about it. Um, George and I, we've been doing this a while, haven't we, George? <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, we do value that feedback. That's how we grow. So again, thank you all for uh, joining us today. I think this concludes the session and uh, um, we look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you Have a good day. Bye.